So in today's video I'm going to show you the fundamentals of needle painting or silk shading. Hi everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome to my channel and today's video is all about silk shading and I'm going to show you all the steps you need to know to learn this beautiful technique. So I had decided for this video I was going to silk shade some birds because we have looked at flowers in the past. It was quite a long time ago and I was going to do these little birds. I don't know if you can see them because not much of them done and I started them and it came up sort of a pack quite quickly that these are quite complex to do in silk shading and what I did was I put a call out to my members and my patrons and I said I'm making this video if you're interested in silk shading or you've tried silk shading and you're struggling let me know what you're struggling with ask me some questions and I'll see if I can cover it in the video and it became pretty obvious quite quickly <laughs> that maybe the birds weren't a good idea for this and I needed to go back to some basics because the thing that came out of those questions the most um, the word that came up the most was intimidating quite a few of you said it was intimidating um, and there were lots of other questions as well is what fabric do I use how do I choose colors how do you know what stitch direction to go in how to get the edges nice and neat um, how do you decide on the stitch order and um, so they were all things that are the basics of silk shading um, so I thought it would be a good idea to go back and look at this and talk about what those stages are and how to overcome all of those problems in silk shading and then we will in another video we will come back and finish off these little birdies. So there is one video I want to point you towards before we get going because it's quite important for silk shading and that is our video all about colour. So colour specifically for the embroiderer so I'm talking about how to use colour in embroidery threads and pick the right embroidery threads. I think if you've got an understanding of the basics of colour, so colour theory, um, how the different colours work together, how you can choose your colours from the um, from the colour palette, from whichever um, stitch, um, whichever stitching thread that you like to use. So do go and check that video out. I will put it up here in the corner for you. It's got lots of information and it might be too much to take on, but you can watch it several times if you want. But I think if you can just have a basic understanding, that will definitely help you when you come to work your silk shading pieces. So the first thing I want to do is show you what I'm actually going to stitch today. So I have chosen these mushrooms. So this is my Cena Rosa, Rosina, Rosea. <laughs> Latin's not very good. Rosy bonnet mushroom. And I went foraging recently with some friends into the woods and um, it was a mushroom foraging session and we picked up loads and loads of mushrooms. And I thought, oh, these would be really good to demonstrate with um, because there's a sort of a single colour palette. The birds had lots of different colours going on and lots of sort of different textures happening with their feathers. And I thought these would be a little bit simpler to do. They've got these straight stems on them and then the caps on the top are beautiful shape and this sort of one colour palette. So I thought this one would be particularly nice to do. So these are the photographs that that I took and what I recommend is when you've got an idea of what you want to stitch the first thing you do is to go and look at the uh, threads that are available and the colours that are available because often I have seen in, in my teaching experience people oh, I really want to do this and they're all a palette of greys and they actually go and look at the greys they haven't really got what you want and that makes it a lot harder so I think the first thing is if you want to practice silk shading do something that the colours <laughs> are readily available for. So I'm just going to pull out the DMC shade card here and talk about colours briefly. Now I go through this quite a bit in that colour video so do check that one out as I mentioned earlier but I just want to talk to you about why I have chosen the colours that I've chosen and how I've done that. Now I'm using the term silk shading, you may also hear it called thread painting or painting with the needle because we're going to make a sort of realistic painterly effect with it. And if you want to do that, the best threads to use are something that you can get um, to be really, really fine. So something that's stranded, so stranded floss or cotton or silk as well, um, silk shading, um, silk. I'm going to use cotton for this. Um, you can silk shade in other um, another thread so you can do the technique with anything the technique is the long and short stitch and you can do long and short stitch in any kind of thread but we're going to use these stranded ones specifically because we can get them nice and fine and we can get lots of detail so we get that painterly thread painting effect so I'm going to do them in stranded cotton stranded floss 
for my friends over the pond and I've chosen DMC. Now I've chosen DMC because the shop down the road from me um, has the whole range of DMC so I know I can go there and get those colours I want. If you're buying online you can download colour charts if you don't happen to have one of these. These are quite useful if you're going to do a lot of um, a lot of embroidery but if you don't have one you can download printed ones off the internet or but even better if you can go in a shop or a store and have a look at the threads that's better still. So I started with this thread card and this is my inspiration picture that I'm working from so I want a range of threads that I think will be suitable for that and you'll notice from this that they come in sort of blocks of colour so that's one dye lot and it's a light dye to the dark dye but it's the same dye lot you can tell because it all starts with 60. So that's all one dye lot. So I wouldn't want one pink from there, one from over here, one from down here and one from down here. Um, that's going to be a funny selection of pinks. If you can get them from the same family group, that will certainly help. There are exceptions to that, which I'll talk about in a second. So I decided that these were actually quite pink and I chose this range here. So I chose from 605 to 600. And I picked that range and I went to the shop and I actually chose them in the shop. And just a word of warning about that, if they have yellow lighting, the colours will look different. So if you can look at the colours in daylight, you can ask them if you can take it to the window or the door. Promise, promise you're going to pay for them. Um, so you can check the actual colours because you can get them home and the computer's something completely different. So I thought I would cho choose those colours. So I'm going to pull those over now. These are the ones that I have picked. Let's put them that way up. So that is this range. Now you'll notice there's some extra ones in there and I actually bought the whole range. Now I bought the whole range just to demonstrate to you guys how I'm going to choose this because I'm not going to use all of them. That's quite a lot of colours for a design that's quite small. My mushrooms are only going to be that big and it's quite a lot of colours to get in and if I try and get all of those in I'm, I will get my I will get confused I won't know where I'm which color I need to use next so I'm going to pull some of those colors out so I'm just that is the range that's 600 to 605 and I'm going to pull a couple out because what happens when we mix two colors together that will create the color in the middle so I'm going to pull out let's pull out 601 and these are quite similar so 603, I think, and I just pull those up. That gives me five colours and I've got that nice range from dark to light. Now that one is an extra one. So I've got dark to light. Now somebody did ask me in those questions on Patreon and um, on our members page um, how my uh, stitching looks very flat. How do I make it really pop? And it's this end that you need to really think about. So those are nice colours but they don't get really dark or really light and when you're painting, when you're thread painting, when you're silk shading you want those colours at either end to really make your piece pop. That will give you a real sense of dimension and it will really look three-dimensional and come out from the fabric. So you need just maybe a little bit of something really dark and really light. Now it doesn't go any darker than that on here so I thought what else can I choose that would go with it that looks really dark. So now I'm going to have to go to a different family group and I found this one, this is 3685 and I thought that goes on the end really nicely. It goes with those colours beautifully and I don't have to use much of it but just a little bit of that will really give me a sense of depth in, um, in my colours. And then I thought the other end I wanted something really really light and when I looked on here I thought well, I can't really see anything that's really light pink without going a sort of creamy colour. But when I got to the shop, I discovered that my thread card's a bit out of date and there are some more colours and I found this beautiful light pink. So this is colour 23 and I thought that's perfect. And the other colours in this range, in this family group of colours, it went quite purple, it went sort of quite lavendery. So the other ones weren't suitable, but when I put that with those, I thought that's perfect. And that gives me those lights and darks at either end that I need to make my P3 dimensional. Now the other colours I got were some white. So on the edge here we've got some really light parts on the mushrooms. So I wanted to go really light so I bought both whites. Now there are two whites. There's usually a couple of whites in whatever range of threads you have. This one is Blanc and then we've got B5200. 
And actually, you'd think the one that said white on it, it's French for white, would be whiter, but it isn't. <laughs> That's slightly off-white, and then the really white one is the B5200. Um, so I've got those as well. Probably don't need... I call that one toothpaste white. <laughs> um, it's got a real, like, yeah, real minty toothpaste-y thing. So I'll probably take that one out as well and leave myself that one. And then I also found this kind of beige one in 842, which I thought might be nice just to bring a different colour range in because I've just got all pinks from light to dark. And maybe something, a different colour might just make it look a bit more realistic. So those are the colours that I have chosen. And that is how I chose them. Um, so I think just keep your colours minimum if you can, because when I mix those two together, I'm going to get that one in the middle and the same with these. So I'm going to get twice as many colours as I've got. I've seen people pull 40 plus colours out for something quite small. And if you've got a subject with lots of different colours in it, that can be absolutely fine, but it can be really overwhelming. So definitely when you start, limit your colour palette and learn how to do the technique, then you can add more in later. So I just want to mention before we look at the next stage is just to think about your fabric backing at this point in time. A nice fabric to use is something that's got quite a tight weave on it, um, especially when you're learning. So a cotton, a nice plain cotton, um, a linen, a finely woven linen, something natural. I think you can do this on literally most fabrics. <laughs> I've done it on denim before and I did it on a denim jacket. Um, but if you're learning, give yourself a fighting chance. So something um, something natural with quite a fine weave to it. So a cotton or a linen or a blend of the two. Think about the colour as well. The colour will change how your threads look on the background. Um, if I suddenly chose a bright colour for this, it would throw all these threads out as well. So I'm going to pick a fairly neutral colour. I'll show you that in a moment to work this on. Um, but you can do a bright background, but just bear that in mind when you're choosing the colours. Take that fabric with you when you're picking your colours. Put them on to the backing fabric, onto, onto your embroidery ground and see how they look on that because that will change everything completely as well. So just something to think about. So I'm going to show you the different stages you need to do now. So the success of silk shading is all about planning for me. <laughs> this is the way I do it. There are a few other methods of doing it, but I find if you plan before you start, you will not get stuck. And there's some specific stages that you can do to help you. So the first thing I did was I've got a picture of my inspiration. You can use something out of a magazine or a photograph you've taken yourself. And then you need an outline drawing of it. So I've got my little outline drawing up here. And if I just show you this, this is the first one that I did. And I just did a little sketch of it. If you want to just trace it, if you're not confident with drawing, you can trace the outlines. And you can see I've just picked three of them and I've made my little own composition. They're not overlapping because that makes it more complicated. So I've just done three next to each other to make a nice, simple design. And I've just got a rough sketch. thought, yeah, I like that. That's what I'm going to do. And I've actually made this one a little bit smaller. I've dropped the size down 10% on the computer. Just decided my original sketch was a little bit too big and it was going to take me a long time to film it and to explain it and use a lot more thread. So I've just dropped the size down a little bit. I'll just put my hand next to it. You can see how big it is. The bigger you do, the more work. So keep it nice and small, definitely while you're learning this technique. Um, so that's my outline design. And then I did a few little scribbles on it. Now I've done quite a lot of silk shading, so I know the processes and I just went in and scribbled my ideas down. So I've just, um, this one is larger. You can see that one's 110%. So I tried a few sizes there. I wrote down the colors that I thought I was going to go and buy from the shop, just to note down what I'd got from the shade card there. So when I went to the shop, I knew where I was looking at. I've done a little bit of stitch direction and some rows on that as well. But so you can see this more clearly, I'm going to show you this one now and these are the stages that you need to do and if you do these you can use these throughout and these will help you so here is my outline design so nice clear um, just a single line design here you're going to use this to transfer so with any kind of embroidery the neater you transfer your original design the neater your embroidery will be so do make an effort to get this part right and to get this nice clean clear outline design that you can use to transfer your design so that was the first stage 
The next stage I've got a tonal drawing. So what I mean by that is how dark or light are the colours on the thing you want to shade, um, but ignoring the colours, so ignoring the fact that it's pink. Where are the light parts? Where are the dark parts? And you see when I chose my threads that I've chosen dark threads and light threads, and that will correspond to this. Now I like to do these drawings myself, enjoy drawing. Um, if that scares you, <laughs> I don't know how to do that, you could just use a black and white one here. I've just made this black and white on the computer. You can use your phone and turn it into a black and white copy so you can see where the darks and lights are on that. So you can do it that way if you want to, if you're not confident. If you don't want to have a go at shading it, you can do that yourself. Just use a pencil or a black pencil, something like that, just to give you one colour. And just note where the dark parts are and where the light parts are, and that will help us when we're choosing our colours. So the same with this, I've done my own colour drawing of it, or you can use a photograph that you've taken of your subject and just work from that. Doing these yourself just helps you understand a little bit more what's happening with the subject matter. You've really had to look at it if you're colouring it and drawing it yourself and to see where those colour changes are and where it changes um, light and dark and where the shades are on it. So if you can do it yourself, you'll just have a little bit of a better understanding. But don't worry if you can't, you can use those copies um, and those photographs to do that. So I've got my tonal drawing and my colour drawing. And then down here, I've got a stitch order. So the order that I am going to stitch everything. Now basically think silk shading work back to front. So work anything at the back first and work towards the front. So if anything's underneath anything else, so the stems of the mushrooms, the stalks, they go behind the caps, they go into the caps and the caps sit on top of the stalks there. So that stem is going behind, going into the cap. So we're going to stitch this part first and then this bit on top and that will help us to get our neater edges. So these ones are quite simple, so it just goes that part first, the cap on top, then that middle one there. This one has just got a little turnover here. You can just see underneath the um, mushroom cap, you can just see inside of it. So I put a little four on there, so we're going to stitch that part first, then that part, and I've actually stitched this so I can show you this, and then the outside of the cap on top. So I'm doing anything that's behind something else first and the things that are on top last. So it goes three, four, five, six, that bit just sort of comes towards, comes to the front, I'll show you that in a second, and then I've gone seven for that one and eight for that. So work that out first, and then when you're starting to think, oh, I don't know which bit I need to stitch next, look at your stitch order and go, what number am I on? That's the next part to stitch. And then the last one that I have done is a stitch direction. So this is the direction you are going to put all your stitches in on your piece and just work it out beforehand and then you don't need to think about it while you're doing your stitching. And I've just done little straight lines. We can't bend a stitch round in a curve, we can only do straight stitches so we have to bend the rows of the stitches around to make the curves. These ones are quite easy, they go straight down. There's a little bit of curve on the caps here. If I just go straight off it, it's not going to have that beautiful round shape that mushrooms have. It's just going to come straight down. So I'm just coming round for the top and just curving them gently. And this one's got a little curve on the stem and a little curve on the, the um, cap as well. And I'm going to start here and I'm going to go down the stem. And then these I'm going to start at the top and come around in a kind of umbrella shape. So I've just got the direction of the stitches there and little arrows to say to me, right, I'm going to start there. I'm going to work that way and I'm going to start there and work that way. I do those five stages for every silk shading that I do. It doesn't matter how many years you've been doing it. I find if I don't do those, if I try and sort of cut corners and don't do those and thinking I know what I'm doing, it usually goes wrong. So if you do all of those, that's all the information you need to do your silk shading. So if you're stuck on a colour, you look at your colour drawing or your photograph. If you think, I don't know what stitch direction these are going in, you look at your stitch direction diagram. If you think, where do I put the light thread, you look at your tonal drawing. Everything you need is here. And if you do it all on one piece of paper like that, keep that with you when you're stitching and you can refer to it all the time. And that should help you to answer any problems that you might have along the way. OK, so that's enough talking about the principles. Let's put the principles into action and do some stitching. 
Okay, let's just run through my setup briefly. Now you can't really do silk shading in your hand. Um, what you'll find is the fabric will all pucker up. There's a lot of dense stitching in silk shading in needle painting. So it is a good idea to have it in a frame if you can. I've got mine held in two versatile table clamps, mainly to keep it extra still under the camera so it doesn't wobble. You only really need one, one will be okay. Um, whatever claim, um, clamping system you, you have, find some way if you can to keep it um, nice and steady and nice and tight in a frame. I've got this in some stretcher bar frames. It's nice and tight in that. Um, so you've got a really nice stable ground to work on. I have got my information in front of me. So I've got my drawing with that. There's five little drawings on there with all the information I need. Keep that to hand. I have done teaching before and I've said to people, well, where's your, your, your information sheet? And it's, oh, it's in the bottom of my bag. <laughs> It's in the car. It's no good in the bottom of your bag. You need to have that with you so you can work from that. And I've also got my photograph as well, just for reference, just if I need some extra clarification on something. And I'm just going to talk briefly about how I put the design on. So this is the fabric that I'm using. This is a linen cotton blend, as I mentioned, quite a neutral colour. And I've picked this, I'll just show you the two that I've worked. So I've got some quite light colours in here and I want you to be able to see the colours I'm using. If I've done this on a white or cream fabric, that gets a little bit lost. So that's really for you to be able to see it. But it can be nice to have a slightly different colour background. So do think about that colour of the background fabric um, when you're choosing your colours of threads. And I've used the prick and pounce method to put this design on so I've just drawn it on some tissue paper I've made some holes in it I rubbed some pounce powder through it and then I drew the lines up I drew up the dots joined up the dots to make the design and used a waterproof pen very fine one to make sure it's waterproof it's not going to bleed if your piece gets a bit damp but we have lots of other ways of transferring your design do check out this video up here with five methods you use whichever method suits you um, the best you can trace it if you want to you can use the iron on transfer pen whichever one suits you to transfer your design but do make sure you do it accurately the better you do this stage the better your stitching will be so I'm using these stranded cottons. I'm using cotton rather than silk. Um, loads and loads of colours available in cottons. And if you're practising, it's a much cheaper alternative as well. But they do look beautiful in silks too, obviously, but better colour choice in the cotton. So that's what I'm going to use today. I'm going to use one strand of cotton now. You might suck your breath in and go, oh, that's tiny. <laughs> but the finer the thread, the more of the needle painting technique you can do. You can use a couple of strands if you want to. It won't quite be as fine as the one strand. Um, so I'm going to use one strand. I hope you can see. And then I just want to remind you, leave it in the skein format here. And if you just pull the end, it's the one that's inside, usually near the bottom. Just pull it out once. And that should be roughly fingertip to your elbow. And then cut that off. And then you've got your strands ready to use and we're just going to pull one of those out so just separate the end out like so and if you just pull it straight up you can get hold of it straight up doesn't get in a knot now do be organized with your threads and your leftovers because <clears throat> when you've got quite a few colors that are quite similar they look the same once they're out of the skein and they're like that you can get them mixed up so be a little bit organized with them keep them in that color order so you know which bit is which color and then for needles you need quite a fine needle so you need to match the needle to your thread we've got loads of videos about needles if they confuse you and you don't know how to thread them one of our most popular videos how to thread your needle so i've got one strand now they do go quite small the needles there's a number 12 number 10 and a number 9. Now 12 is tiny, it's tiny, tiny, tiny and um, a single strand of stranded cotton will go in a number 12 but they are small and the ends stick in your fingers and I'm not a fan of them to be honest. Um, so I'm going to use a number 10 which is the next size up so the bigger the number the smaller the needle. If you can't see a number 10 and you're really struggling go to a number 9. There's no point struggling with this stage of it there's enough to learn with the rest of it so if you're really struggling with it just go up a size needle it will still work absolutely fine it will be okay you can get a little bit more accuracy with a smaller needle but you need to be able to thread it so i'm going to go down the middle and use a number 10 for buying which i find works absolutely fine and you'll need quite a few because we're going to mix the colors up together 
So I'm going to show you these two that I have stitched first. Um, I'm a great fan of sampling and trying things out first. And I thought I'll just stitch these ones, just get into it so I know what I have to remember to talk about and what's important. So I've stitched these two on the same thing here. So you can see how they get a little bit darker as they go underneath the caps. I've just got some darker threads in here. And then I've got these light edges along here as well. So the light's sort of coming here and they're dark on this side. So my light source is sort of coming from this direction, if you like. It's a little bit darker down this side. Um, and then a little bit of that really dark colour in there that I mentioned earlier. Just a few stitches in that one. So we're going to do the same thing on here. We're going to do this little one over here. And I thought I'd leave this one for the video because it's got a little bit of a curve on it. And we can talk about stitch direction, how to st change stitch direction. So I know from my um, my little drawings that I've done, my information sheet that I've done, that we're going to stitch this part first. It says number one on it. <laughs> so I don't need to remember that. I think, oh, where do I start? Look at your information. Where do I start? Number one. So number one, this goes behind the caps and we're going to work underneath here and I'm going to come down this way. Um, I'm going this way because I want to make sure I get these colours right. This is the important bit here. So I'm going to start with the important bit, make sure I get those colours right and work down the stem. What you can do if you want to, if you're not confident, there's a little curve on this. If you want to draw the direction of the stitches on, you can be super careful with the pen. If you draw on anything that's not the mushroom, you've got to cover it up. So obviously I <laughs> don't need to tell you that, but I'm going to mention it because it's happened. So I'm going to use my waterproof pen and I'm just going to lightly put just those few lines in so that I know when I get down to here my stitch direction needs to be going that way. The line of that stitch is just a little reminder that when I get there just make sure I turn my stitches as we go. So I'm going to start in there and what I'm going to do on the edges is work a split stitch. Now there's quite a few questions about the split stitch. Lots of people do this I've seen and they don't do a split stitch underneath it and it's still super neat so you don't need it but it is a good way of just neatening up the edge of your work. So I'm going to do it on this one and show you what it does. So um, I was also asked why split stitch and not another, another stitch. So a split stitch you make a straight stitch and you do another one and overlap it. So one of them comes out of the other one. So it makes like a continuous line of stitches. If you did a back stitch, they sort of butt up to each other and they go into the fabric at the same point. Whereas if you overlap them, you get this nice raised edge. It just lifts the edge of your embroidery up, your edge of your stitching up a little bit, and it gives you something you can put your stitches over and you get that really nice super neat edge. So if you are struggling with neat edges on your silk shading, I do recommend putting the split stitch down, but we're only gonna do it a little bit at a time. So I've got one strand, I'm going to do it in one strand. I've got it in my number 10 needle. I put a little knot in the end, put that on the top and that will get cut off. That's a waste knot, two small stitches to start my thread. And then I'm going to bring it up here. Picked a sort of fairly light pink. This is a little bit darker down this side than it is down this side. You can see that on this one. So I'm going to do the slightly darker colour down one side and the lighter colour down the other side. I'm just going to come up right in that point there and do my split stitch. So nice and small. I'm going to come up through the middle of that stitch and work my way down there. Stick to the line. The split stitch is sort of the design line. So if you don't do this straight and neat, then your stitching will get a bit off. So just take your time to do this nice and neatly, nice small stitches to go down that outside. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on that so you can see that even more. So straight down with my needle, little small stitches come back up through the middle of that previous stitch. We're splitting a stitch, it's called split stitch and go ahead. If you're finding that difficult, you can come ahead of yourself and you can go back down through the stitch. You can see it on the top, it's a little bit easier. Get slightly thicker stitch on the back, but it's absolutely fine. I'm all for finding ways to <laughs> fix things. If you can't do it, then find an easier way to do it. So you can go that way if you want, or if you're a bit more confident, you can come up through. Make sure it's nice and tight go forwards. 
so just all the way to the bottom we don't need to go across the bottom because that's going to get covered up later with some little grass stitches so just straight down to the bottom when you've done some stitching you can cut your little waist knot off so you've got a nice neat start and finish there's no lumpy bits or knots or anything on the back it's quite a nice method to use so i'm going to start my other thread over there and come down the other side now you'll notice i've parked that one on the top and just brought the needle through to the top we can use that color again shortly so they don't need to start and finish it all the time if you're going to use it just park it somewhere out of the way and we'll bring that back in later so just coming down the other side with a lighter color it's going to be a bit lighter on this side You shouldn't be able to see this split stitch, but just in case, <laughs> do a colour underneath that's going to get in the same colours that it's going to get covered with to give yourself a fighting chance. And you'll notice I'm not going around the whole thing yet. I'm just doing the section that I'm working on. So I don't need to go across the top here because that's part of the cap. So I'll do that bit when I get to the cap. So just that little section that you're working on as you go. So work the split stitch down both sides of the stem and now we're going to start with our first row so i'm bringing in a slightly darker pink now this edge of this um the cap here is quite white on it's quite pale on it you can see that on the other two that we did and i want that to stand out against what's behind it so this is going to be sort of my palest color here so i want this to be darker than that so it looks like it's behind it so i'm just going to come in with the next darkest pink now so just make sure you look at your colors and keep an eye on where you're going with them don't use the very darkest one because then you've left yourself nowhere to go and if you did it several times you would choose different colors and that's the great thing about silk shading is you can't you don't really get it wrong um you can just do different variations of it which i quite like about that and if i did this again i would do it differently but it would still look like the mushroom so that is the good thing about it it is quite painterly don't worry too much about oh is this the right color is it doing it right just um just lots of practice basically with silk shading and that will all come so i've got a sort of a mid pink here and i'll come up right in the middle of the stalk and i'm going to go right down on that line that's going to be my first stitch now keep your stitches fairly short with this if you do great big long stitches it's harder to shade it it looks a little bit stripy if i just put my finger next to that you can see how long that stitch is and it's called long and short so we're going to make that the shorter one then i'm going to do a longer one next to it like so now i don't want to put too many in in that color because then i just get a block of color I'm going to get rid of my little knot get those knots waist knots out of the way once you've done a stitch or two you can just cut those off i want to mix my colors up if you just keep going in the same color you just get blocks of color and it's not shading so i've done a couple of stitches and i brought my thread back to the top that's quite important if you leave it on the back it gets in a big tangle and a big bird's nest and you'll throw it out the window so bring it back to the top and now i'm going to bring that one back in that i did this edge with to bring it back i'm just going to pull it back on itself and it should open up the hole in the fabric you should be able to get that needle back through if you can't and it makes a little stitch on the back it doesn't matter just don't park it kind of over here out in space because if you can't get it back down you've got a big long stitch on the back if you want to turn it over and just pull it out and rethread it you can do that that takes a bit of practice but just park it nearby and it will be fine if you don't get it back through so i'm coming next to that previous one now and i'm just putting a stitch in there and i've just made that one a little bit longer as well i'm going to come up in that gap there put one in there i'm going to work this sort of first row and fill the stitches in there it's a bit lighter towards the left and a bit darker to the right so i'm just going to come across with that one a little shorter stitch there so i'm just varying the lengths of my stitch if you make them all the same you get blocks that way and that way and that way so just mix those up a little bit a longer one here don't need to measure how long they are i've had people do that before <laughs> get the ruler out it's got to be four millimeters hasn't got before but just vary them basically 
do some a little bit longer than the others. Now when you get to that split stitch edge, I'm actually going to bring my original thread back in that I used to do the split stitch edge. So you can see I've not done many stitches before I change colour. I've got three colours on the go. And I'm just alternating. It seems like a lot of time spent swapping needles all the time, but the more you do that, the more realistic this is going to look. And then just to go over that edge, sort the edge of the split stitch. I'm just coming up on the inside of it. And then I'm just going to go down on the outside. And as I move down the shape, I will do that. I'll just put one more stitch in there. Come up on the inside, down on the outside. Look at my angle of my needle. It's going towards that previous stitch. Tuck it nice and tight against your split stitch. And you get that really nice edge as you go down. Let's put one of those lighter ones in that middle. There's a little bit of a gap there. You want to make sure you get enough stitches in. Really make sure you cover your fabric with them and you put plenty of stitches in. So I'm going to finish with that one, bring it back to the top. You can see I'm bringing them down out of the way so I've got room to stitch. Pull that back, take your needle back down. Let's put some in and finish that row off. Don't get carried away and go down one side. Be sort of a bit methodical about working it in these rows. We don't want to see the rows, but we want to work in rows and that will help us to do our stitching. So I'm doing two stitches in that. I can park it up here if I want to. Park it in any area that you're going to actually stitch in. Then I'm going to bring this darker one back in and finish off over this side now. So a little bit of a shorter stitch. Right down, right up to the line. And then we'll do the same with this one as well. So I'm coming up on the inside of that split stitch and just take my needle down on the outside. Do another one of those just up on the inside, just down on the outside. Like so. So I'm going to call that first row done, I think. There's a little bit of a gap there. I want to fill that in now, really. Don't want to leave it till later. And I think it would benefit from a darker, that darker one. So I'm just going to put that one in like so. Let's part that up here. So that is the first row done. And um, I've got three colours in there. Just point with that. I've got my light, my medium and my dark. So darker on the right side, lighter on the left side. That's giving some shade to that stalk there. Um, I've started in the middle and gone down that way. Always do your first row in the opposite direction. So we're going to start inside the shape and go to the edge of the shape. The other ones are going to come the other way, but the first one is always different. So come up inside the shape and go down onto the design line that you've got at the edge there. And we're going to bring that down now. So my stitches are going to change direction slightly, only very, very slightly. I'm just going to bring them around a bit so they start to just curve down that stem. If I keep them in that angle, they're going to come off the edge of the stem over here somewhere. I want them to come down towards where the mushroom grows up out of the ground. If you all stitches go that way, it will look much more realistic. So let's start the second row. So you're going to start in the same place. I'm going to start in the middle here. It's easiest to start in the middle and go to one edge and go to the other edge. It just helps you to get into the stitching a little bit. And we're going to come lighter as we come down now. This is a bit darker where it's underneath the cap. Now I want to lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to leave that darker one out and bring in these lighter colours. But I'm still going to start in the centre. I'm going to start with this colour that's in. So just pull it back, hole opens up, take the needle back through. And what I'm going to do now might surprise you. I'm going to come right up in the middle of the stitching there. The more you overlap these rows, the better the shading looks. If you just go in at the ends, you get a kind of a ridge of stitches and that's when you can see the separate rows. So really overlap your stitches at least halfway. Half of the previous row um, is covered with the next row. So you can come right up into there, come through that stitch and you come down this way. And here it's less of a long and a short and a more of a long and a long, <laughs> but you start them in different places. So you just stagger where they are and they look longer and shorter. So I came out of there and I'm going to come out of the end a little bit. So let's make that one a bit longer. Back up in here, come right in here, 
Look how far back I'm coming through those stitches. I'm going to cover half of that previous row with this row. And bring that up out there. I've done three stitches and I'm going to change my colour. You do get used to doing that, by the way. You think, oh, I've got to keep changing my colour. It's much easier to keep the same one in. But you get into a rhythm of it. And I'm going to put the lighter colour in here. Come out right through those stitches and just pack these stitches in nice and tightly now. It's a lighter colour. We want to lighten it up as we go down. Don't forget to refer to your material, refer to your photograph and your or your colour drawing. What is it actually doing on the mushroom? I'm not making this up. I'm looking at <laughs> my picture in front of me. In fact, I will put a picture of it up over here so you can see clearly what it's doing. It's getting lighter as it goes down the stem there. So I'm just doing that with my thread. I'm stopping and looking at that photograph looking at my drawing and what is it actually doing and you can use the black and white one at this stage that takes the confusion of the color out of it we know what colors it is because I've got those in front of me where is the light parts of it and then putting that in with my thread that's probably the hardest bit to choose your colors but use the materials that you've got and that you've already worked out um, so I'm going to part that down and come back in with this light pink one and fill in those gaps. So I'm just mixing up these two colours as I go down. Don't get carried away and come down the side. Finish off that row first. You can see some gaps. So I'm splitting that stitch there. And you can see those colours start to shade now. If you've got too much of a jump in your colours, it will look a little bit stripy. So try and use the colours that are next to each other if you want to do that nice subtle blending. This one's about to run out, so I'm just going to bring it up there, do one little stitch, second little stitch, back to the top, then you can cut that off. And that's nice and neat and tidy on the front and the back, and then I can bring another colour in. So we're going to carry on with a lighter colour down there. And what I'm actually going to do now is bring in this colour here. So this is my slightly different beigey colour. I thought this would just add a little bit of interest. You can put in every single colour that you can see <laughs> if you want, um, but it's about how you use your colours together I think. And so just to shake it up a bit and make it not all pink, I'm going to bring in a little bit of this beigey colour now. I'm coming down this stem and you'll see what that does. Second. So I'm going to start it, put my knot right out of the way. Two little starting stitches, that just secures your thread. And let's put a couple in in this now on the right hand side. So I'm coming up right through the middle of that. And I'm just turning. If I leave my stitch angle as it was originally, you can see it's coming off the edge of the stem. So if I keep doing that, it's going to look strange. It needs to, to bend around, it needs to curve around the shape. If I come down here, it's too much of a curve. I've just, that's going to be like that. And then it's kind of goes around the corner. So just a little bit to sort of change it each time. The next row will come in a little bit more and the next one a little bit more. We just turn it gradually till we're going down. A lot of the times I see it, people sort of panic. They see where's the finishing line on head for the finishing line and it's too much too soon. So just gradually curving it round now. So original one was that direction. I'm just going to bring that one round to there. Just coming out in different places. And then when you want to do the edge, so we're going to change direction. So we're coming out now and down towards the bottom. When we want to cover this split stitch edge, we come out and go back the other way, just at the edge. So I'm just coming inside the split stitch edge and just angled my needle. Look at the angle of that, it's quite flat right next to that edge, next to that previous stitch. I'm going to do a couple like that. And that will make that edge nice and neat there. And I'm going to park that one. And I'm going to bring in, what colour do I want to do? It's still quite light at this point, so I'm going to bring this 
pale pink back in. Now I did pull the white out with the intention of using the white, but this pale pink looks white. Things can look different depending on what you put them in because it's so pale next to the other colours. It's doing the cut, doing what I want it to do. I don't think I'm going to put any white in at all. I think this pale pink is going to do the do the job. So it's okay to change your mind. You don't have to use the the colours that you've selected. So you can see how far back I'm coming in those stitches now. Just change the length of them. Just vary them so they don't all stop in the same place. I'm going to change that one as well. So I'm going to carry on working down this stem. I'm going to make it a little bit more of the beige at the bottom. Sort of getting a little bit browner at the bottom, a little bit more beigey. So I'm going to bring in this slightly darker pink and the beige at the bottom to finish that off. So I've got to the bottom of the stem now and hopefully you can see what's happening. <laughs> it's quite a hard subject to explain on a video it has to be said but I've just changed throughout those colours. I've got four colours in I'm still thinking slightly darker to the right hand side and darker as I get to the bottom. You'll see that I am not worrying too much about where the rows are but I am just finishing a little section off and then moving down and doing the next section coming right up out of those stitches. That's the bottom there. Now I haven't done a line across the bottom because I'm going to cover that in a few little stitches to put some grass on top so to give it a little bit of context. So I'm not too worried about how flat it is at the bottom, but there's still a few gaps here. So I am just going to come in and fill those gaps in. Mixing up my colours as much as possible. When I get to that side, I come up at the bottom and I go back the other way. So it's just at the edges where you need to go that way. Otherwise, we're coming out and coming down towards yourself. But just go back and that should give you that nice smooth edge. Just keep going till you've sort of filled it in. Just going to park them near the edge now. Bring that darker pink back in. So just keep checking your information. Keep checking your picture. See what the colours are doing. You can see I've not gone too dark with this at the minute. I want the top to be much darker. I'm saving those dark threads for the top. If I put them in down here, I can't get any darker at the top. And then just some little shorter ones at the bottom, just to fill in those gaps. Let's come up just inside that split stitch edge there, just down outside it, tuck it in nice and tight to make that nice smooth edge. I think we'll just bring that one in for the last few. Just keep changing the colour. If you do that block of colour, then it won't be nice and shaded. Got a little bit there. I can just get one more, one more stitch out of that. I think right in there. I can see where that wants to be. And if you're sort of getting a bit of a ridge up there, you can come up and put another colour in. Now I'm going to show you how to add in a stitch in a second because I have people say, "Oh, it's really hard to adjust it," and it's not. Silk shading is really easy just to add some extra little bits in. So if it's not quite right dead easy to put another stitch in and I'll show you that in a second. Now to finish off these threads, you obviously you've run out of space here, so you can either, which is what I tend to do, so I don't want to turn my frame over, is you can come up between the stitches to get the needle between and do with two little stitches. It's quite hard not to go through the thread or you can turn it over on the back, just weave it underneath some stitches on the back to secure the ends of those threads. So I will turn it over and do that. I just want to show you one more thing at the top and how you can add a stitch in because I think this isn't quite dark enough. I'd like it just to go a little bit darker just as it goes underneath the cap there. So I pulled out the next darkest colour. So this is... That's my darkest one there. This is the next darkest one. So I've just pulled out one strand of that one and I'm just going to put a couple of stitches in. It's literally going to be a couple. So I can start my thread up in this area here because that's all going to get covered. So I can just do my two little stitches in there nearby to where I want to start. 
and then I'm just going to sneak a stitch in. So the trick with this is to come straight up out of your stitches. So split one of the stitches. So I'm just going to put a couple, like literally two, I think. So I'm going to split that stitch. I'm going that way. And I'm going to go down at the end. Just pull that down a little bit tighter. That's on top of everything else now. And just pull it down a touch tighter. That will just sink in a little bit. I think just a tiny one there, just a really short one. I'm putting in what I need now. This is just some additional stitches. Like so. When the top is on, it'll make more sense. Let's put one in over here. I said two. I always do that. I'm going to put two stitches in and then I put four in because I want to show you how to do it the other way if you wanted to add one in the middle. So I'm going to split the stitch and I'm going to go the other way. And what you need to do here is you want this stitch to disappear. So I'm going to slide the needle between the stitches. Look at that angle. That needle is nearly flat. And then that should go disappear into those stitches like so. One there. I'm going to call that definitely. <laughs> Stop. Now it looks like they're quite strong colours but when the top is on it will look different as well. It looks sort of a bit stark at the minute because it's sitting there on its own but these colours will appear again in the top and it will blend in much more easily. So you have to have a little bit of confidence that you're doing the right thing. So I've just finished that off and I'm going to cut that off and cut that off. And then the one more thing I want to mention that's quite important is your stitch tension. There's a lot of stitching going on. If, you, if you've if you got tight tension, and I generally do have quite tight tension, I have to be very aware of it. Just keep your stitch um, tension nice, um, nice and loose. Maybe not loose, but just don't pull them really tight. Just think about that when you're doing it. If you pull this tight, this fabric will all pull up and pull together and you'll get these little puckers in it and you'll get these marks in the fabric. So you want just to be nice and relaxed when you're doing this. Just think about that, not too tight with your stitches. You're piling a lot of stitches on top of each other. Nice relaxed tension with it so your fabric stays nice and smooth. Okay, so don't worry if you're still a little bit confused about all of that. It is a complicated technique just to get the hang of and especially to teach actually, <laughs> and especially on a camera as well. So I'm going to explain those processes again with the cap of the mushroom and we're going to go over that again and I'll show you a few more things that you can do that might help you along the way. So this is the bit we're going to do. So it's sort of this shape here but I kind of borrowed the colours from this one here. So you can mix and match a little bit if you need to just because I like the colours of this one. These had been picked from the ground, have been lying on the table for a while and got a little bit damaged. So I'm going to do this one here and we're going to use that whole range of colours now in the cap. So we're going to use all of them right from the very dark to the very light. So the darkest is right down this side here if we look at this one and in fact if we look at this one as well. So that really dark red's going to come in down here. Then we've got all these medium sort of darkish colours here and then it comes to light here and I just want you to pay particular attention to the edge of this here. This is a white all the way along here as they all sort of are around that area. We've all got this light edge to them and it's a little bit frilly as well. It's a little bit sort of, um, it's not smooth put it that way, not like the tops. There's a nice smooth shape here, but a little bit of a texture and a little bit of a frilly edge here, which we're going to do something with in a second. So that's what we're going to stitch. So in order to get our colours in order, these are all the colours I'm going to use. So I took the white one out, as I mentioned, just decided that was too bright. I didn't need that one. This light pink on its own with all these other colours was working really well. So it's okay to ditch a colour if you want to um, and equally you can add one in if you think you're missing a colour and you really need one of those other shades back in there you can put that back in as well and the leftover thread that I have taken if I just pull that one out and show you so when I pulled that arm length out that fingertip to elbow length I've just wrapped the remainder around the skein so I know that that belongs to that skein because once you're down to one strand they can get mixed up and then I've just got my needle threaded in that colour and I've just stuck it in the number so I know that thread is that colour because I've threaded one strand of every colour up now because I know I'm going to use 
all of these. So I know these darker ones are going to go on that right side where that gets really dark. This light one is going to go right along the bottom there and then these ones are for in between. So keep a sort of an idea about what colour is going to go where so you don't run out of dark colour or um, get to the edge and you haven't used any of your light colours. So be methodical about how you keep your threads. There are lots of systems that you can use and things that you can buy to, to keep them in order. So whatever way you want to use you can. I find that works just okay for me. And then I just want to show you this as well which I showed you right at the beginning, which looked a little bit like a lot of scribble on it. But you can add more detail to this if you want more um, information to help you. So you can see where I've sort of marked these rows on that I did earlier. I did them very loosely in rows. I kind of just worked at the top and, and worked my way down in sections. They didn't need to be that long exactly, and I've worked that bit and then I do that bit. But it was just a case of work at the top and work down slowly and don't head off down one side. That's more important with a bigger area now. So you can see it on this one here and how I sort of put the rows in. So that will be my first row there. And my second one roughly sort of about there, third and so on. So you can actually mark those in on your plan if you want to. I'm going to go that way. So this will be my first row and that will be my first stitch in the middle. And then we're going to go left and right, doesn't matter which one you do first, either side and complete that row first before we start going any further down the shape. So be quite methodical about this now. Work one section and then move to the next section, we're splitting it up into smaller sections so we can manage it much more easily. And I've got stitch direction on there as well. So we've got that to think about too. So if you want to mark those onto your actual fabric, you can do that. And I'll show you how to do that now. So if you find it helps you to mark them on the fabric, again, you can do so just very lightly. So I'm just going to mark up my pen super lightly, just roughly where those rows are. I haven't got to stick to that. And if you want to put some stitch direction on as well, you can. I'm just going to curve a little bit. And you know that when you get to those areas, you need to be going in that direction. That's all you need. Don't scribble all over it. And just do be super careful if you're going to do that, that you don't draw on some of your stitching. You've already done all the bit that you're not going to stitch on at all. But you can do that if you find that helps um, as well. So I'm going to put a split stitch around this now. And I'm going to change the colours to match the colours that are going on the actual um, cap of the mushroom. So I said it's going to be really dark down this side, so I'm going to go in with the very darkest colour. I know it's going to be this right down that side. So I've just put a knot in near the bottom because we're going to start at the top with two small stitches. But I'm not going to go around the whole shape. Now if you remember that bit we just looked at and said it was really kind of quite frilly along the bottom here and it wasn't a nice smooth shape. So I'm not going to put the split stitch along there. I'm going to leave it off there and just go around the top shape so that we can just come down with the stitches and make a sort of frilly edge and we're not making it nice, super neat and tidy. If I come all the way around my split stitch and I go over that, I get a nice smooth edge to the bottom of the um, fungi and that's not what it looks like. So just do look at your subject, see what does it do and how can I make my stitches do that? So I'm just going to start at the side with my split stitch now. Again, nice short stitches, as neat as you can, because this will set where your other stitches go. And I'm just going to go around that dark edge. I'm not going to go around all the shape though, because it's not this colour on the other side. It goes nice and pale, so I'm just going to actually change the colour of that. You don't need to change every stitch and do a colour. It's just as so though you've got roughly the right right colour in there. And I'm not going to do my really light stitches over a really dark split stitch. So if I just come around maybe about to there actually I'm going to stop there. I'm going to leave that thread in though because that's going to come into it. So I'm going to park it on the top down there out of the way. As tempting as it is to leave them on the bottom, do bring them to the top because you will get in a mess with them if you don't do that. And then I've got a lighter pink, so I've gone two shades down for this one. I'm going to carry on round with this. 
I might actually, looking at my colours, go all the way around with this one. It's not super light right on the side there. It's super light in the middle and at the bottom. So I'm just going to finish it in that colour there. And the neater you make this, the neater that stitching will be. So take your time to do this bit nice and accurately. And you can see why I didn't just go around everything and split stitch right at the beginning. You want to make those decisions as you go understand the subject that it is your stitching and then you can choose the right colours when you get there and which bits actually need split stitching and which bits don't. So we're going to start in the middle so we've got fairly dark but not really dark so kind of mid-tones but nearer the dark end and I'm going to start right in there and this doesn't change colour a huge amount at this point so we don't need to do loads of needle swapping. So I'm going to start with the colour that's kind of in between these two. This is my, which colour are we on? So my third darkest colour that I'm going to use now. So that's the darkest and I'm going to start in the middle and that gives me two more colours to go till I get to the dark part. So just be aware at all times of where your colours are sitting and whether you're going to run out of a colour or not, so just be aware of that. So I'm going to start in the middle, so that's going to be my long stitch. Don't make these too short for the first row especially. If I come, I've marked my kind of line there, but that's really where the second row is going to come out of the first row, so make your first one nice and long. So we'll do a slightly shorter one. You can see how I'm tucking that needle, I should really tuck it from that side towards that previous stitch. This will give us that nice neat edge. So down over the split stitch. I'm going to come up that side. So I've got three stitches in. I'm going to just put another colour in now just so it doesn't look like a really solid block but I think I'll go to the right next. I'm going to bring that up there ready to go in as my next stitch but let's bring another colour in. So let's bring in, let's do the next one between those two. So this is the penultimate dark one if you like. Now I've got my stitch direction marked on so there's a lot going on now you're thinking about colour and you're thinking about stitch direction and how long your stitches are. So there's a lot happening. So I'm going to come in there. With that one. And I'm just going to put one stitch in. And I'm going to jump to the other side. I'm going to make that one a bit longer. And let's come back in with this one. And we're just mixing those colours. And silk shading is meant to be seen from a distance. You're not meant to look at it in here and go, wow, isn't that amazing? It's meant to sort of work a little bit of a distance way. So those colours will blend. The eye will do the blending for you. We can't blend them like we can blend paint. So we have to rely on the eye to do that. So let's bring that one back out of the way. Let's bring that one back in. Nice and tight over that split stitch edge. Let's do a second dark one. Now you can see here my stitch direction is doing that. So just be slightly aware of, of that and make sure that you're not going straight up like that. You need to just turn it in a little bit just so they curve around that shape really nicely. Don't do too much too soon because that will look wrong too. So just a little bit each time and you'll find that will swing around nicely. Bring that one up over there and bring this one in a few times now. Don't want to get too dark too soon. Let's do a longer stitch. And we'll do a short stitch. Just vary the ends. Don't really worry about, oh, was the last one a long one or a short one? Just make it a different length. It is quite a painterly effect, so don't worry about alternating them because then you'll get some stripes. So I've done a few in that colour, so now I'm going to bring this dark one back in. So 
that longer one. Let's do two of those. And I would say with silk shading, don't try and unpick anything. If you think you've gone wrong or you haven't put the right colour in, just change the colour when you notice it. You can usually hide it. Okay, I'm just going to get these knots out of the way. Nobody's going to notice if one stitch isn't quite the right colour, so try not to take it out if you can. It's quite difficult to take out because your colours are all intertwined with each other. So if you find you've done the wrong one, just get the right one. Keep going and it'll work, I promise you. Nobody is going to know. And as I said, if you did it again, if I did this again, I would use different colours wouldn't do exactly the same combination of colours. So now I'm going to put that really dark one in. Just going to start to introduce that dark colour now, but only one. Now I'm going to come back to the second darkest colour. Put one in there all the time, just gently turning that stitch. Now you can see the stitch direction that's going in now. It's not going off the top. It's just turned slightly, but equally it's not gone too far that way. two in to make that one a bit longer. You can start to see that coming now and I'm not worrying about the next row what's going on down at the bottom I'm just concentrating on one part at a time. And this is a really nice chance to have a go at this really beautiful shading on this. So if you want to have a go at this particular design I will put a PDF PDF up of this on the free stuff page on the website. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video if you want to have a go at this. Put the outline design up, I'll put those five stages up and I'll list the colours I've used as well. And if you want to have a little practice at silk shading, then you can have a go with that one and use the video to help you. But do be kind to yourself, allow yourself time to learn it and just play with it and don't worry if it doesn't quite go right. It does take practice as all of these things do. Practice, practice, practice. But if you don't start then it will never come so just have a go. Baby steps as they say. So I'm coming in with a really dark colour now down this edge going to come all the way down. So now you can see what I'm doing because I'm on this curve. I'm coming up on the inside of that split stitch and then just take the needle down on the outside as I've done across the top. If I do that all the way down the side, I'll even just go a little bit further with that one just to get that nice edge in. Let's park that one out of the way and let's go back to the middle. So I've done half of that row. So don't think, oh, I'll just carry on down here and point carry on down here now. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to finish that row and that's row one complete. Then we move down to row two. So be a bit methodical. I'm going to bring in that second darkest one now. We're going to fade that out and go towards light. Keep looking at your reference. Just check that you are doing the right thing. Dark one in, park that one, bring the next lightest one in. You can see they sort of, they're not getting tangled, but you can see how easily they would do if they were on the back and you didn't bring them to the front. So I can't stress that enough. Bring everything to the front you're not working on. Make one a bit longer, make one a bit shorter. We go down over that split stitch edge because that will make the nice neat edge and then for the other stitches we're going to come the other way but I'll show you that when we get there. So lighter now. I'm going to take that one most of the way around then I'm going to come in just that tiny bit darker as I get back to this edge. 
you get a little bit of experience, you can start leaving spaces for stitches. I wouldn't suggest doing that too much in early stages, but so I can work that and then I can come back in with this one and go between them. Be careful if you do that, that you don't get stripes. Just slot that one in there. Look, that's quite nice. And then I think I'll go all the way to the edge with this one. Just see, I've turned the angle ever so slightly inwards there. And then we're going to go down over that edge and we'll just come down just inside the edge there, just down outside that split stitch, just to make that nice edge. There's a bit of a gap there, so I'm actually going to come and put one in there. Make sure you cover your fabric up. Put enough stitches in like so and there is our first row complete so we've done that first part there that first part up there so now we're going to do the second part so if i just cover that up so again dark medium and it's getting a bit lighter now that light's starting to come into the middle so i'm just going to make sure i keep that dark on the right hand side the medium colors here but now i'm going to start to bring in more of those lighter tones so we're going to go back to the middle so I've still got my four colours in that I use. I can carry on with these ones now. So the second row, we go the other way. We've gone up in the middle of the fabric, down over the split stitch edge. Second row is going to go the other way. I'm going to come out of these stitches now and come towards me. And I'm going to come right out in the middle of those and come this way. Change where you come out. If I come out next to that one, all the way along. I get this little ridge along here and I don't want that ridge so I really want to stagger where these come in and out now. So I'm going to make that one come out a bit higher up and finish a bit higher up. That's going to about work and get out of that now. So I'm going to change that thread. So just finish it off with your two small stitches back to the top. Cut that off. And then let's just come in with a bit of this darker one, just on to the right now. So I came out of there for that one. So this one, I'm going to come out down here, really interlocking those stitches now, making sure that they're going to shade really nicely. And then right back up in here, almost to the top. I'm going to stop that one there and I'm going to bring it in. So that's the second darkest. I'm going to bring in the third one. Just double check that's a bit lighter. It is. So it's all about method, I think. Be very methodic with it. So we've got a couple of gaps in that there. I'm just going to come and bring that lighter one. I just sort of want it to be a little bit lighter generally now in this area. We've still got it darker down one side than the other but I'm just going to bring these lights in. I'm going to take this one over this side. Now you can see my stitch angle is going like that there. If I keep doing that I'm going to sort of shoot off the edge of my mushrooms. So I'm just going to bring it around ever so slightly. Can you see how much I moved that needle? Hardly at all. I do that you're going to get a kink in your stitches so just bring them around nice and gradually you want to just jump over and put a couple of those in just to sort of mark that angle you can do that that works quite nicely always add them in if we need to. Remember earlier I showed you how to add a stitch in when we did this darker one here. And also by having all these threads on the top you can see what colours you've got to choose from. If they're underneath you've got no idea what's underneath there and which one you're picking up next. So having them on top is good. So I'm just going to continue to the right making them 
different lengths as to where I come in and out of those stitches just staggering that so the rows blend nicely together. I'm hoping this is starting to make some sense to, <laughs> sense to you now it's not an exact science so it is quite hard to explain but it's just about constantly being aware of where you're going with your stitch direction what colour you're using bring the darker one back in now so I don't get a block of that colour out of there down into here and again I'm just going to put a few of those in with some gaps and come back and fill those gaps in when I get to the edge I go the other way so I come up side the split stitch and the needle goes up down to the outside. If you try and come up on the outside of the split stitch it doesn't look so neat so it's definitely worth going that way. I'm going to park that one there, I'm going to bring this one back in. Put that in between those ones there. Like so. I might just get two stitches out of that. Not good at making my thread go a long way. If you're struggling with that, they don't fight that stop and start a new thread. It's... Get one more in there, I think. Ooh, just about. There we go. Just get my little stitches in to finish it off. Right, so let me talk through the next part. So I've got a little gap there. I'll just come in with a lighter one, that one I think, and fill those in. Then I'm going to go to the left. I'm going to bring much more of this lighter one in now. And I might even go down to the next colour, start to introduce that one and go across there and make this whole area lighter here so that when I get to the bottom, just check my reference, I've got this nice light edge along here. So I'm going to sit and do a little bit of that now and then we'll come back and have a look. So I put a couple of rows in there, again just keeping those lighter ones here and a little bit darker over here, but I just want to show you what I'm going to do across the bottom. So I talked about that edge being a little bit frilly and not nice and smooth, and about the split stitch. So I'm not going to do a split stitch all the way across, because if I just bring my a few stitches out over that, um, I can make that sort of effect with it. I don't want it nice and smooth. But just where it goes across the top of the stem here, I'm going to put a little bit over there. I want to define that area really. I want the cap of the mushroom to definitely be over the top of that. And we've done that a little bit with a colour. I'm also going to do a little bit with a split stitch just to lift those stitches up a little bit over the top of the stem. So I'm only going to do a little bit in just that area. And then when I bring my stitches over there, that will just lift them over the stem. So I get the effects of the colour and of the split stitch and I'm just going to stop it there. So just over there, just to do it there and then this little bit, we can create that texture. So now what I can do is I can come right over this line. Now just be careful with your last row that you don't end up bolting for the finishing line and just taking up and right over the edge. You still might need to do a little bit of long and short in there just so you don't get a big block on the last row. So I'm just going to take a few stitches over but here. I'm just going to stop them a bit short. Um, not on my lightest thread yet. That's the next but one. So I'm going to come in with that lightest just for the edge. So I'm going to leave myself a little room to do that but I'm going to bring these stitches nearly down to the line there and then just the last sort of it's almost like a half row I suppose really just don't head there too quickly and think oh I'm nearly there I'll just <laughs> jump straight to the line and I've finished still think of those longer and shorter stitches just for that little extra detail so I'm just going to do that now just got that very pale pink in there now and I can finish off all of these gaps in this and to get that edge I'm just going to come over the line a little bit just go straight down with the needle and just do that with a few of the stitches so take some of them up to the line 
there's a little bit of the split stitch here so I'm going to go over that and just tuck that into the split stitch there so that'll be a nice smooth bit there's another little gap here let's come right back into this pink stitch here so I don't get those lots of colors and again we'll just come past that one a little bit and you just get a slightly sort of uneven edge so I think once you've learned how to do the technique you can play around with it a little bit to create different techniques and if you want to do feathers which we'll look at when we do birds then you'll need to do a lot more of this so a lot less kind of sticking nice and closely to that split stitch edge and just feathering the edge ends out literally <laughs> literally feathering them and just make a slightly different finish to it so just keep going till it's all covered make sure you cover your fabric my tension's getting a tiny bit tight I don't know if you can see that bit of fabric's just wrinkling a little bit so we need to just loosen off on that tension a bit I do have tight tension generally so it's something I know I need to be aware of just don't pull my stitches quite so tight so last stitch I think down over there finish that one on the back so that's a little shorty one and I think that is done so before you decide that it's done just hold it away from you just see what does it look like is there anything that stands out as not quite right and this now is the time to fix it it's easy to put those stitches in and just a little trick for you if you get the end of your needle if you just run it along in the direction your stitches are going it just sort of helps to separate the stitches out a little bit you can see if there's any gaps there's a little gap there look you can just see the thread the fabric through there so I think I'll get another strand and just put one back in there and if there's a one that's sticking up a bit you can just push it down a little bit with the needle and just give it a little stroke but I think I'm quite pleased with that so I'll just fix that one little gap then I'll just zoom out and we'll have a look at all three together so there's all three for you done and I just want to have a little look at the middle one as well because that was a little bit more complicated it was a bigger shape there was more going on with it there was these sort of dark colors in the center here and it's a little bit light on top and light underneath but you still do it in exactly the same way section off your design into small areas into rows look at your shaded diagram look at your color drawing make sure you understand where you are going with which color get your colors in order keep them in the order that they come in so you know where your darkest and your lightest is and you can work in between and you should get the same result so there's the first row there which was mainly lights with a bit of dark a lot of darker in the middle but going light towards the edge another row there coming out of the dark and into the light like that and then that light edge on it again as well and I did that bit first because that bit's underneath it and it's folding over the top stems the same so dark where it's going underneath the cap of the mushroom and I just brought in a little bit of that fawny beigey color as well just to change things up a little bit and made it a little bit darker at the bottom and there's the third one which is similar to the one that we have just done with a slightly straighter stem on it I'm just going to show you the back as well because I want you to see what it looks like if you stick to that method if you start and finish your threads in the way that I have done it's quite neat on the back it's almost <laughs> the same shading on the back as it is on the front sometimes it's a little bit more interesting as well um, but um, you can see the results of doing it that way and starting those threads with the little knot the little waist knots and the two small stitches I haven't got anything crossing over from one to the other here I finished everything off within the shape and the only reason why you wouldn't want it to do that is if you've got a long thread across here and it's a bit loose and that comes undone then it could come out here and it could come out here and it's just nice to keep it nice and tidy and neat like that and it just shows a good sort of working method and then you haven't got to then fight what's going on on the back now I've just got one more thing I want to do I want to just give these mushrooms a little bit of context they were in the ground um, and they were amongst the plants and in the grass and I just um, want to give 
that effect on my piece of work otherwise they're just sort of floating in midair so if I just go back to my original little sketch that I did I just put a little bit of grass along the bottom and it just kind of grounds the thing that you're stitching so think about it in the whole context as well and not just stitching this one thing and it's floating around in space what can you do to make it look like a, a whole finished piece so I'm just going to add some little bits of grass in there just to ground my mushrooms so here it is all finished, my silk shading in a little bit of grass with a little bit of silk ribbon work on there. I hope you've enjoyed watching that and it's demystified silk shading a little bit and you're ready to have a go. Don't forget that free PDF um, download. The link is in the description below if you want to have a go a little bit of silk shading yourself. And do check out this video up here. This is the one all about the colour theory. Really worth knowing if you want to tackle silk shading. If you've enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up. That's always appreciated and I will see See you next time.